Mario Builder 64 is a ROM hack that has been taking the Mario level making community by storm. It lets you tap into your creativity and build your very own 3D Super Mario 64 levels. If you've ever dreamed of designing 3D Mario levels in a simple way, then this is the game you have been waiting for, and I'm here to teach you how to make levels in it. Before we jump into the editor, I think it's best if I show you the list of controls for the editor. Feel free to pause the video so you can take notes. It's a lot easier if you're using a controller, but if you still want to use your keyboard, you can do it. Alright, with that out of the way, let's make a new level! When you do select a new level, you have two modes. One for Vanilla Super Mario 64 and Cursed Mirror. This mode features new items, objects, enemies, and even a different health indicator. The size can be either small, medium, or large. And then, Template is the theme your level will initially have, as this can be changed later. With everything selected here, let's go ahead and hit Create. Then you'll get to pick a name for your level. I'm gonna name this something really creative. I can spell yes! Once your level is named, you will be sent to the editor. Now, I know this site can be really overwhelming at first, it's one more dimension to work with, but really, it's a lot simpler than it looks, and I'm here to show you how it really is. So you'll have this white hotbar at the bottom with several icons, which is where you pick the objects you want to add to your level. You scroll around this bottom hotbar by clicking the L and R buttons, and place the selected tile or object by pressing the A button. And then, if you think you have misplaced the tile or object, Hit the B button to remove it. You can navigate around your level with the analog stick and the left and right C buttons to rotate the camera, which I map to the left and right analog stick on my controller respectively. To move around your level vertically, press the up and down C buttons, which are also assigned to my right analog stick from my own controller. And then you can zoom the camera by clicking down on the D-pad. With this in mind, you can place your tiles and objects in all said motion, like you're seeing right here. Alright, notice how some tiles and objects have two arrows on each side? That means that you can change certain properties of that item, like the appearance for example. As for tiles, you can flip them vertically by pressing up on the D-pad. And you can rotate every object by pressing the Z button. For me, it's L2. Yeah, after seeing this hotbar, aside from play level and settings, there's only 7 slots in it. And you may be thinking, oh, hang on, is, that, is this all you can add in a level? No, that, that's not the case at all. See, if you hit start while highlighting one of these seven slots, you'll see the whole toolbox, which has every object and tile shape available. You might not see any enemy here, but there, there's this little arrow here on the right. So you simply move the cursor all the way to the right side, and you will go to the second page of the toolbox, where all your enemies, bosses, and stage hazards are. So if you no longer need to use a tile or object in either of these seven slots, Go to the slot, hit start, and then pick the new object or shape you want to use. And it will replace the now unwanted item. Like so. If you go to settings over here at the far right in the hotbar, you will see the environment menu. The first option here is where you can change your level theme. It switches the material of the main floor and the walls that are surrounding the level. And then and then the fact is an additional element that you can use to help your levels pop out more. And, if you switch the theme to Custom, you get access to this Edit Custom Theme button, which takes you to a menu where you can customize the textures of your blocks, poles, fences, iron meshes, and even water, like you're seeing here. Yeah, these blocks have more options, which add an extra topping to your block, allowing your levels to stand out even more. You can enable this option by pressing Enable Top Material, but if you don't happen to like any of the extra looks, simply click right here on Disable Top Material, to remove the topping. Next up here on settings, we have Level Boundary Menu, where you can choose the type of layout for your level. You have Plain, Valley, Chasm, Plateau, and Void. And for every layout, you have the Material option, where you can change the texture of the main floor and the main walls of the level. This height option is only available if you pick Valley or Chasm layouts, and this height refers to how tall the walls that surround your level are going to be. Look. I'm, I'm increasing the limit here, and as you can see, the walls got higher. Next up in settings, we have music. In here, in the type option, you can choose the music for the main level. Here, then, the music that plays when you're challenging Koopa the Quick, that is if you had him into the level, of course, and then the music that plays when you fight a boss, no matter who it is. Just from seeing the album and song options here below, it should be easy to tell that Mario Builder 64 
has a really wide selection of music tracks for you to choose from. It has vanilla SM64 to renditions from, from other Nintendo games and to the Mario titles, and tracks used in Robotronics Hack, Beyond the Curse Mirror. Moving on to Miscellaneous Menu. The coin star option can only be enabled once you have placed at least a total of 20 coins in your level. Basically, the coin star is that secret star that appears once you collect a set amount of coins. Like in the original game, in each course you need to collect at least 100 coins to collect these secret stars. On to Water Level. This one is a given. This is where you set the initial water level. I say initial because this water can be lowered or raised if you add one or more water diamonds in your level. Keep in mind that this water is not the same as the one found in the toolbar menu, as this water in the toolbar menu is used to add independent water bodies, such as ponds, lakes, anything of the sort, anywhere you want in your level. And then we have Costume, where you change the character you play as in the level, though this option is only available in the Curse Mirror mode, and cannot be used in the vanilla Super Mario 64 mode. And finally, we have System, which is where you save your changes made to your level and, to the, and exit to the level menu. Play level allows you to test your level without saving the changes in your levels file. Hmm, what else can I show you? Alright, moving platforms! Here's how you add them. Grab your platform and place it where you want it to start. After you press A to define its starting point, you can either place a waypoint by, start it by pressing A again, or set the end point by pressing Start. Once you do hit Start, the game draws a yellow path for the activated platforms and blue pads for looping platforms. The only difference is, the blue platforms here move by themselves with their set path. Moving platforms aren't the only objects that operate in this trajectory system, as the Bowling Balls and Koopa the Quick also use this system. As of this version, you can only place a maximum of 20 of these trajectories in one level. Also, be aware that enemies can interact with switch items, such as the purple switch and the on and off button, so be extra careful when you place these. Another thing that I see you guys asking is, what is this red cross button, and what does it do? Well, this is called a coal marker, which is an invisible tile that deletes faces from sides of blocks. This is mostly used for optimization and reduce the amount of vertices in the level. This is especially useful if you play Mario Builder 64 on hardware. Once you're done building your level, you can finally save it. If you do want to share it with others, feel free to post it on Level Share Square or on the Robotronic Roundtable Discord server to get feedback. Lastly, you can take screenshots of your level to set its in-game thumbnail by either pressing left or right on the D-pad while on the level settings icon. Choose your angle, distance, and snap the picture with the start button. And this is how you use the Mario Builder 64 level editor. If you think there was something else that I missed or it should have been mentioned, you are more than welcome to let me know in the comment. True, and if I'm going to be honest, I'm very happy that I made this tutorial, as it is the very first 3D Mario level making game that I'm, that I'm covering in the channel. In case you don't know, I make videos on everything that's about Mario level making fan games, mainly games that are on level share square. So if you are into this kind of content, then if this video has helped you, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I do tutorials, showcases, pretty much everything when it comes to Mario level editors. <laughs> Blue7, signing off. Peace.